Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. Let me just say, walking home alone from work late at night is always a risky move. Learned that lesson real clear after the deeply creepy incident I had a few nights ago. Still gets my heart racing just thinking back on it. It started off like any other typical evening. I had stayed late at the office to finish up a big project I was working on, taking the last bus home around 10 p.m. In hindsight, I should just grab a taxi or caught a ride share when working overtime this late. But money's been pretty tight, so I figure I'd save the cash and just walk the 15 minutes back to my apartment complex from the bus stop. Seemed harmless enough at the time. The bus dropped me off at the stop by the grocery store near my neighborhood. Everything looked normal as I started the short walk home. There were even still a decent number of cars driving by, so I didn't feel too concerned being out alone that late even though the streets were mostly empty. But after a few minutes, I got this really ominous feeling like I was being watched or followed from the shadows. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and I paused to casually glance behind me down the dark street. Didn't see anyone right away, but the creepy feeling still persisted. I tried to shrug it off and kept walking, picking up my pace a bit. But then I clearly heard footsteps that weren't my own, deliberate and getting quicker like they were trying to catch up to me. The sound of the second set of footsteps stopped abruptly when I stopped. Someone was definitely trailing me back there. My stomach dropped and I could feel my pulse start to quicken. I was still a good ten minutes from my apartment building with nothing but houses and closed office buildings around me. No in stores or crowds to slip into where I could find help if I ended up in trouble. The menacing presence behind me was closing in, I could just sense it on a primal level. In a moment of panic, I abruptly whipped around to try and confront whoever was back there following me. But the sidewalk behind me lay empty under the dim glow of the streetlights. There was nobody I could spot lurking in the shadows. Yet the terrifying sensation of being followed at close range still filled me. Thoroughly freaked out, I practically ran the last few blocks to my apartment complex. I kept glancing around wildly for any sign of actual movement in the shadows, fully expecting to spot someone, but there was nothing. Still, I could not shake the paralyzing feeling of unseen eyes tracking me, just waiting for the right second to make a move. By the time I finally made it to the front doors of my building, I was tearing into the lobby, gasping for breath. My hands shook as I frantically checked my mailbox, desperate to get inside my apartment and out of harm's way. The lobby was also empty, but offered low comfort. Just as I turned to climb the stairs up to my unit on the third floor, I distinctly heard the entry door slowly creak open behind me. I whirled around instantly, truly expecting to find a stalker from the street sneaking inside behind me. But still, no one was visibly there in the brightly lit lobby in that moment. Utterly freaked beyond belief at this point, I rushed up the stairs, taking them two at a time. I could feel the evil presence climbing up behind me, pursuing me to my door. When I made it to my unit, I scrambled to get my key in the lock and slammed the door shut behind me, locking both deadbolts as fast as I could. I stood there gasping, peering through the peephole back into the empty stairwell. Still no actual sign of the phantom intruder I was sure I had heard enter the building's lobby down below. But I knew what I heard, and I knew I had barely escaped something sinister out there in the dark. Ever since that harrowing night, I'd been a nervous wreck, hardly sleeping more than a few hours. Every small noise jolts me awake in a panic, worried whoever had followed me that night found out exactly where I live now. But so far, nothing else creepy has happened. Just me being extra paranoid over shadows and footsteps in a way I never was before. My buddy thinks I just imagined the whole thing or maybe a stray animal was tagging along behind me without my notice. But you can't convince me something evil wasn't going on. I know when I'm being actively hunted, even if I can't explain it rationally. There are menacing presences lurking in this world you sometimes can only feel, not see. Maybe I watch too many scary movies, but I can't simply dismiss the bone-chilling dread I experienced. My gut tells me I was definitely targeted that night walking alone in the dark, and whoever or whatever took a twisted interest in me is still roaming out there somewhere, waiting for another ideal moment to strike. Call me crazy, but my instincts have never failed me as intensely as they did in those shadowy moments. It will haunt me forever. I'm just hoping keeping vigilant will be enough for now. Only taking taxes at night, looking over my shoulder obsessively, 
double checking the locks wherever I go. Probably seems like overkill to some, but he didn't feel the primal evil I encountered. It shook my usually skeptical core right down to its roots. All I know is I'll never blow off that sick sense of being followed again, even if I don't see the source. I was completely wiped after basketball practice ran extra late that Friday night. Coach had us doing suicide drills up and down the court over and over again until my legs felt like mush. Then he made us run layup drills for another solid half hour. By the time he finally blew the whistle and called it a day, I was dripping in sweat and could barely feel my legs. All I wanted to do was get home, eat some leftovers out of the fridge, take a hot shower, and collapse into bed. The weekend was finally here, I was looking forward to sleeping in after the grueling week of practices. I gathered my stuff from the locker room and headed out to the emptying parking lot. Dusk was falling and the streetlights flickered on as I walked over to where my bike was locked up. I dug my key out of my gin bag and worked on unknotting the chain while loosening up my aching shoulders. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a grimy old van parked a few spots down from me. The windows were tinted dark and it looked like two guys were sitting in the front seats. A creepy vibe came over me when I realized they were just sitting there staring blankly ahead, not moving or talking. Their engine idled loudly in the quiet night air. I shrugged it off, figuring maybe they were just waiting to pick someone up for practice too. After freeing my bike, I slung my heavy gym bag over my shoulder and pedaled off into the night. The streets were pretty empty since it was almost 10 p.m. on a Friday. Most families were already home having dinner or getting kids ready for bed. I coasted easily along, following the familiar route through our suburban neighborhood I always took home from practice. After about 10 minutes, I rolled up to a stop sign and hesitated before making a left down another street. Out of habit, I casually glanced behind me to check for any cars. My heart practically jumped out of my chest when I saw that same van from the school parking lot was now following close behind me. The two shadowy figures were still sitting motionless inside, slowly creeping along just a car length behind me. Panic shot through me and I instantly started pedaling harder, my exhausted legs screaming in protest. But fear flooded my body with fresh adrenaline. Why were they following me? What did they want? Icy tendrils of terror clutched my chest, making it hard to breathe. I started taking random sharp turns down side streets and back alleys, desperately trying to lose the van. But each time I nervously glanced behind me, it was still there, trailing after me like a predator silently stalking prey. My mind raced almost as fast my pumping legs. Should I bike to my best friend Josh's house? but I didn't want to drag him into this creepy situation. So I just kept pedaling, my lungs burning and my thighs feeling like rubber. Dread sat like a knot in the pit of my stomach. The neighborhood streets were empty and quiet, most houses now dark with families asleep inside. Never had I felt more alone than in that moment, being hunted by mysterious pursuers in the shadowy night. In a last desperate move, I made a quick turn and swerved down an alleyway, pulling up sharply behind a large, bushy hedge. My bike toppled over as I leaped off, crouching down behind the leaves and branches. I tucked myself into a tight ball, trying to make myself invisible in case they spotted me. Through a gap in the foliage, I watched with frightened eyes as the van slowly prowled past the alley entrance. My heart pounded wildly against my ribs like it would burst right out of my chest. I could see the two men jerking their heads around, looking for where I might have disappeared to. After what felt like an eternity, the van continued on, turning left at the next street. I huddled there paralyzed behind the bush for a few more minutes, shaking uncontrollably with fear and adrenaline. My whole body was drenched in nervous sweat, my bike shorts and jersey clinging to me. When I couldn't take waiting there a second longer, I shakily stood up and walked my bike back out to the road. I decided to take the longest, most roundabout way home I could think of. The streets were completely deserted now, most houses turning off their porch lights and settling in for the night. An eerie silence hung over the sleeping blocks. Not a soul was out as I pedaled anxiously through the darkness, still constantly checking behind for any signs of that stalking man. By the time I got home, I was nearly hyperventilating. I ditched my bike haphazardly on the front lawn and sprinted inside, locking the door securely behind me. My parents were already in bed, but that did little to calm my rattled nerves. I searched the house to double-check all the doors and windows were locked up tight. 
Finally, I collapsed trembling onto the couch, pulling a blanket around myself. Who were those men, and what did they want with me? Would I see that van again if I bike home alone tomorrow night? Should I tell my parents or even call the police? Technically, those guys hadn't really done anything wrong, just followed me for a few blocks in their creepy van. But their intent had seemed clearly malicious, like they were targeting me for some unknown sinister purpose. I thought about calling Josh to come over so I wouldn't have to be alone, but it was past midnight already and I didn't want him to get in trouble with his strict parents for sneaking out so late. So I just sat there in the dark living room wide awake all night, listening for any strange sounds outside. Every creak of the house made my heart seize with momentary fear. I kept playing those petrifying moments over and over in my mind, biking desperately through the gloom, glancing behind to see the predators slowly stalking after me, feeling so small and vulnerable, completely exposed on my bike in the empty night. Never before had I felt that bone-chilling sensation of being hunted for unknown evil reasons. I maybe drifted off to sleep a few times out of pure exhaustion, only to jerk awake in a panic after having vivid nightmares of being chased down by faceless predators. By the time the sun started to rise, I was bleary-eyed and jittery, but I hadn't slept more than 20 minutes all night. It was past 11 p.m. on Friday night when I finally left my friend Alyssa's apartment after a late night of binge-watching shows and chatting. She only lives a few blocks away from me in our quiet, suburban neighborhood, so I usually just walk home alone rather than bug someone for a ride. But tonight the darkened streets seemed eerily desolate. Alyssa asked if I wanted her to walk with me or call me a cab, but I brushed it off. We lived in a pretty safe area and I'd made the walk dozens of times. Still, I felt a prickle of unease as I stepped outside and started down the sidewalk. The pools of light from the street lamps created more shadows than illumination. I picked up my pace, just walking to get home. The tap of my footsteps echoed along the empty streets lined with darkened houses. A chill fall breeze whispered around me, making me pull my jacket tighter. I was less than two blocks from home when I noticed a solitary figure standing under a street lamp up ahead. Even from half a block away I could tell it was a man wearing a hoodie pulled up over his head. He stood utterly motionless, hands in pockets, facing away from me. A wave of dread crawled up my spine like icy fingers. My instincts were screaming that something felt off. I crossed to the other side of the street to avoid passing directly by the creepy figure. But as I drew closer, the man suddenly turned and began walking towards me. His pace exactly matched mine, keeping the same distance between us. I sped up, so did he. I glanced back again and felt a spike of fear as he had now pulled the hood down even lower over his face, concealing his identity. My heart began to hammer against my ribs. I was still a good mile from home and didn't want this weirdo knowing where I lived. I turned around and called out sharply, why are you following me? Leave me alone. The man paused briefly under the harsh glare of the street lamp as if considering his next move. Seizing the moment, I pulled out my phone and yelled louder, stop following me right now or I'm calling the police. He stood there staring back from the shadows of his hood. My hands were trembling as I unlocked my phone and opened the dial pad. But just before I could call police, the man resumed trailing me, hitting me a wide berth on the opposite side of the street, but matching my hurried footsteps. Panic constricted my chest, making it hard to breathe. I fought the urge to break into a terrified run, knowing that could provoke him into a violent chase. Instead, I continued striding rapidly forward and called the cops in as calm a voice as I could manage under the circumstances. I described the man in his clothing and gave our location. The dispatcher said a patrol car was on its way but would take some minutes to arrive. In the meantime, I was alone on the isolated street with this dangerous predator. We continued the nightmarish parade under the humming streetlights, the only sounds are footsteps echoing off the darkened houses. My mind raced with worst case scenarios. I tightened my grip on my pepper spray keychain, the one feeble defense I had aside for my phone. Each moment felt agonizingly long my heart in my throat as I constantly scanned for any sign of flashing lights. Finally, I heard sirens blaring as a police cruiser wheeled around the corner. The stalker froze as it came screeching up beside us. Two officers leaped out, yelling at the man to put his hands up. He immediately complied, backing away slowly. Fury mingled with my fear, seeing him act suddenly docile and compliant. 
The officers roughly grabbed and cuffed him, shoving him against the hood of the car. I quickly explained what had happened between panicked breaths. After making sure I was physically okay, they put the creep in the back of the patrol car. One officer stayed with me while the other sped off towards the station with the prisoner. My legs walled with the release of adrenaline, a sickening pall coming over me. I still felt violated and exposed, even with the perpetrator in custody. The remaining officer kept reassuring me that I'd done exactly the right thing by calling them. This man clearly meant you harm, he told me. At the station, I gave my full statement and they took down all my contact information. The cops were sympathetic but also frustrated, explaining this happened far too often to women walking alone at night. I was determined to press charges so this criminal would face consequences for his menacing behavior. It was after 2 a.m. by the time an officer finally drove me home. We made sure the creep wasn't somehow still lurking nearby before I went inside. As soon as I locked the door behind me, the weight of the night's trauma fully hit. I collapsed on my bed exhausted but couldn't sleep as the chilling memories kept replaying. The rest of the night I lay there vigilant, flinching at every sound. I felt depleted but wired at the same time. My neighborhood suddenly seemed foreign and threatening in a way it never had before. I used to walk alone here without a second thought for my safety. But that sense of security had been irrevocably damaged within one brief encounter. When morning finally came, the light did little to relieve the lingering unease. I kept going over all the terrifying what-ifs. What if I hadn't stood my ground, or he run when the cops came? The world felt like a much more dangerous place now, hiding unseen predators in its darkness. From now on, I knew any late-night walks would be riddled with paranoia and fear of repeating this chilling harassment. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.